What's up? What are you doing? Be my little helper? You were, she was, until I hit record, she was attacking the tripod and having a lot of fun with it. Cute pumpkin. Don't be bite. Okay, and face. I know, you're not just a butt. I'm sorry. No, I have all this stuff set up on the table and why then that don't, why Why am I using this camera? Say, that doesn't make any sense. Here, this is, this is better. Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. We got live plants here. And very bad lighting. I'm sorry. It's a dark, gloomy day and I didn't feel like bringing my lights in from outside. It's just laziness, that's what it comes down to. But we're not here to look at boxes, are we? No, let's look at what's inside of these. There actually, there were four, I already opened one of them. You can see it, I couldn't resist. I had to just dig in, I was being impatient. I uh, ordered some plants, clearly, as you can see here, from Home Depot. I've ordered from them before, and uh, but it's been a few years. It's not a lot of stuff, it's just a few things, bunch of boxes, but kind of the same thing in most of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump on in here and start opening them. Now, even though these are from Home Depot, they, uh, came from three different sources, which is fine by me. I don't care how they get the plants to me. Oh, it came with a little card. What do we have here? Okay, it's a little info card on the plant. That's nice. So, okay, spoiler alert. Here's what's in the box. Invoice, save that for later. And then let's see these bags. Okay, that feels nice and hefty. It's heavy as it should be. These are canna musifolia, the banana cannas. I had these years ago and absolutely love them. And they were, mostly hardy here. I had them for about four years and we had a terrible, horrible winter and they didn't come back. Same thing with this other canna that's in here, which are the Stuttgart. Stuttgart? Stuttgart? How do you guys say it? You know what I mean? They're the variegated cannas. How convenient they gave the little card here so I can just show you guys what this has to say. The giant canna, world's tallest canna musifolia. So it's called the banana canna and the name is canna musifolia. Musa is banana musifolia, banana leaf canna. So there's a picture. This is just a general description of cannas. It's not really anything very exciting and it's not talking particularly about this canna. The canna musifolias though, the leaves tend to be spaced further apart along the stalks and they can get, mine got about 12 feet. I see things online saying eight to 10. Originally I had found these through uh, Plant Delights Nursery. And that's where I would have preferred to have ordered them from again, but they don't have them available right now. But they're listed as like zone 6B or 7 and up with cannas. You know, you need to mulch them really heavily during winter time. And uh, they get really big, really, really big tall cannas. And as you saw here, I'll show it again. Here we go. They have really nice foliage on them. It's, you know, dark green with some light green in there, some red veining. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful plant. And another plant with really pretty foliage is this other, excuse me. And that's the Stuttgart. It's a variegated canna. They're absolutely gorgeous plants. They can be a little bit tricky in full sun. So I usually plant these where they get a good amount of morning sun and then afternoon shade. And if possible, like filtered light throughout the rest of the day and not just shade. But the variegation on these does crisp up a bunch. When these are actually growing, I'll do videos on them because they're some of my favorite cannas. So I'm happy to have some more of them. I am curious as to how big these rhizomes are for that musifolia. So maybe I'll go ahead and dig into that just to have a glance. Yeah, I figure this is a little bit more useful than just looking at a bag that has some roots in it. Decent sized roots, decent sized rhizomes. That's what I was hoping to see because these musifolias, like I said, get really big. So if these have been teeny tiny, itty bitty little sections then i would have been a little bit perturbed but no these are good they have multiple eyes on them some are even starting to sprout there should have been five one two three uh, okay four five this one's that's pretty little. It has lots of eyes on it, so I guess it's okay. I'll let that one slide. You know, typically when I am buying these sorts of things in person, I can, you, you know, you can feel the bags and tell what's going on in there. These actually feel like they're pretty good size too. I mean, one of these is all the way from here to here. So that's nice. I don't wanna open them both up though, because it's not time to plant them yet. I might get them going in my growth space. I don't know, but that was, yeah, an idea there. So those are the cannas. I'm really excited about those. Still gonna be several weeks till I can get them going outdoors, but I might start them up in some pots here in a few weeks. That might be all right. And now for the real exciting stuff, we got actual plants. I can do the big one first because then I have a place to put the stuffing from those into the, the you get it? It's a palm tree, big shocker, right? It's a cat palm. I should probably back up a little bit. That's a little bit too close, isn't it? Ugh, I love cat palms. They have really nice, cute little stems on them. They don't get very big. I'm not gonna do a care video on them right now or go too far into their details, but 
They're just nice looking. They're kind of like the poor man's Kentia palm as far as their appearance goes. You agree, Pumpkin? Okay. Yeah, might help if you can actually see the plant, right? They're just nice looking house plants. This is all very backlit. Is that any better? There we go. Nice green foliage. I'll get some better shots of this and work it into B-roll. They're a clumping palm, a clustering palm. They put out little babies along the bottom, kind of like an areca palm or a bamboo palm, but these stay much smaller. They're more compact and they just, their foliage is just green. Like there's not a lot to them, but uh, there's something kind of nice about that simplicity. They sort of give a nice clean look wherever they go. And like I said, they remind me a lot of a Kentia palm. Their care is different. The, they require more care than a Kentia palm. Kentia palms are pretty simple palms. These are going to be a little bit more finicky, needing more water and whatnot. But most palms are more finicky than a Kentia palm. Kentia palms are usually pretty simple to grow. They can be nerve-wracking because it's easy to overwater them. The main thing is just to like kind of let them chill. Whereas with these, they are going to have more typical houseplant care. Really, that's that's probably the best way to describe one of these cat palms is just care for them like you would a typical house plant. Bright indirect light, water when the top inch of soil gets dry, that sort of thing. And it is packaged well. You see that bamboo that's in there? I always appreciate when I order a house plant and it comes in a box with a stick in it. So that if the package gets flipped upside down, which this one had been, there was soil everywhere on the foliage when I pulled this out, uh, the whole pot doesn't shift around in there. That stick keeps things in place. That's something I really appreciate and I think that everybody should do that when they're shipping plants. It's just nice to have that extra security. And then there were three, actually four. I already opened one. They're all going to be the same. I'll go ahead and pop one of these open, have a look at what's going on inside. That's a lot of packing peanuts. That's fantastic. Love that. But hey, the plant's being kept in place, so I'm okay with it. And there's this cardboard bent around the plant in here, and it's really holding things together. I like that. And the pots are wrapped nicely and packaged. Well, these are good. Very good. Actually, when I pulled them out and started getting that wrapping off of the pots, I was thinking that it would be really bad if these were potted up in pure sphagum but they're not. This is just a top dressing. Just some moist moss that they've put on top of the soil to help it through shipping. And I don't mind that. It's kind of a messy way to do things. Just gotta get it all out of there. But this did hold that moisture in really well. These aren't dry at all. Heliconias though are looking pretty good. These are Lady Dye Heliconias and they are actually what led me to even doing this order to begin with. I have a hard time finding Heliconias as mail order plants. You can get them as like rhizomes and uh, just little cuttings and things like that. Actually finding them as plants that are established is harder. And they grow fairly quickly, so I can understand why sometimes the online retailers are just setting out the roots and rhizomes. But for those of us who live up north, uh, we need to get these going early in the season to get them to put on a show. They have the most exquisite tropical flowers, and the flowers on these are all kind of faded and looking kind of shabby from shipping, but that's like a general idea. There are lots and lots and lots of different types of heliconias. The Lady Di has kind of a pale orange flower on it. It's not my favorite of the Sidorocorums. Sidorocorums are the uh, parrot beak type heliconias. They have a usually a more short upright growth and they tend to be the most prolific blooming of the heliconias. Typically you can get like year-round flowering from them. They have upright bracts. The flowers are tiny little tubes that are tucked inside there. Again, not a care video. Just wanted to kind of give like a broad picture of what I was able to get here. It was the heliconias. That what, that's what drove me in. They're harder to come by up north. I'm in St. Louis. I have them earlier in the season and I'll be able to go ahead and get these moved out to my grow room under some grow lights where it's a little bit warmer, get them to take off, and then I'll be tucking these in with my annuals and things like that during the summertime. And they will just put on a show of these little orangey yellow torch-like flowers all summer long. Hummingbirds love them. I liked how they were packaged. That's not a reflection. I mean, it is a reflection on Home Depot, but they weren't sent from Home Depot, I don't think. Even though the invoice says that they were, says two of them were, I don't know. It's a little bit confusing. So uh, ordering the plants from Home Depot, the reason I even decided to place the order it was because it was free shipping. And I think we all know, uh, anybody out there who's ordered plants online, one of the most frustrating things about you get your cart filled up when you're ordering plants and then you see the shipping total. Sometimes it is just astronomical. And yes, I know there's no such thing as free, right? Like, now, like this cat palm was $37. That's pretty pricey. When they actually have them here at the nurseries, they're nowhere near that much. Like, I don't know. I've seen them at Walmart for like 
thirteen dollars before, but it's been a few years. I don't know. They're not sending them up this far north anymore. That's why I went ahead and ordered it because, like I said, I just haven't been seeing them in the nurseries for a very long time. So now I have that. I'm just not going to wait around for them to hopefully show up and get them for cheaper. It's like you know what, thirty-seven bucks with shipping uh, for a plant this size. It's not huge, but it's a decent size. I have spent far more money on shipping before for plants that didn't have a box that were that big. When you factor in the heliconias, there are four of those in fairly decent sized pots. They're just six inch pots, but each one of those came in their own package. And then those rhizomes, the cannas that are back there on the corner of the table, was a separate package. So six packages total, no shipping. I'm good with that. There are a few other places that I have ordered Heliconias from, but let me tell you, the shipping was outrageous. Like I would get usually the Hirsutas. If I were to order four of the Casa Flores Hirsutas from, I won't say where, but I think the shipping's like 70 bucks and the plants are more, but they're also slightly larger. But that, I mean, this order, that's almost 50% of what this entire order cost. The shipping's factored in, I'm sure, but still, for what I got, I think that it worked out to being a good deal. And I like what I got. Everything here is really pretty. Everything was packaged nicely. I like how they arrived. Oh, there's a lot of care put into everything. Oh, and the cat palm came from Costa. These all came from different vendors, but it was all through Home Depot's websites. So they're doing things, you know, kind of like Wayfair. But the cat palm came with a little care guide. It's very, very simplistic care sheet there, but that's still nice. And then it has a little pamphlet here from Costa about working with plants and the things you can do with them. That's nice. No, this isn't sponsored. Just trying to give an overview of what was put into the packaging. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, I have ordered plants from Home Depot before. They were perennials, outdoor plants. A few years ago, I ordered some, um, what were they, gardenias. And they, again, they arrived looking beautiful. And there are plants that I haven't been able to get into the local nurseries here or at my local Home Depots. So that's the main thing here. Is it's just nice to be able to get your hands on some of the things that aren't shipping to your area. I'm excited for these heliconias to rebound and put out some fresh flowers. But anyways, that's it. This is a quick little plant haul. It's all just plants I've been trying to get my hands on for a while. I mean, I've seen them around, like the Stuttgart canna and the um, canna musifolia. Not the hardest plants to get a hold of, but the musifolias I have had issues with, like particularly places like eBay, where oftentimes it, like the indicas are being sold as musifolias and they're not the same plant, but they do look kind of similar. It's just one's much smaller. It's a whole thing. Everything worked out wonderfully, and I like these plants a lot. I think I placed this order on a Sunday, and by Friday, everything was here. They arrived on different days because different vendors and growers were sending them, but I mean, I'm fine with that. Regardless of that, they're doing okay. Their foliage is a little bit cupped, so I need to get them warmed up. That That's a sign. I'm not going to go into all that. That's a whole different care video thing. I hope everybody's doing well. Have you guys ordered from Home Depot before or any other free shipping places? Comment down below. Love talking to everybody. Social media is all linked down there, and you do the whole YouTube thing with the like and subscribe. The notification bell's good. That way you know when new videos come out. Okay, like I said, I gotta go get these plants out to the grow space. Get them warmed up. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. <laughs>